Well, as a little bit of an introduction about this uh, video, uh, explaining the starting circuits on early Fords, well, or 60 era Fords. I just wanted to let you uh, know that I'm going to try a little different technique. There are many people who have complained about my pauses and, you know, say, well, you need to get on to the point. Well, I thought, well, I talk the way I talk, so with this new technique, basically use uh, the Microsoft, uh, or the Google, I should say, the, the Google add-in read aloud to read the script that I prepared uh, for this upcoming video. Hope you enjoy it and don't miss the pauses. In the following diagrams the colors chosen were for clarity. They will probably not match the wire colors in your vehicle. Let me start off explaining the internal operation of the starter relay. There are two sets of contacts in the starter relay. There is the main contact which energizes the starter motor. And there is an auxiliary contact which is used to provide a full 12 volts to the ignition coil for starting the engine. You may be wondering why have the auxiliary contact. Well the reason for this is the coil actually operates at 9 volts when the engine is running. At 9 volts the coil will produce a voltage of approximately 30,000 to 40,000 volts. By using the auxiliary contact to supply 12 volts to the coil, it allows the coil to supply a higher voltage to the spark plugs for easier starting. The coil design is for operation at 9 volts with the engine running, so supplying 12 volts to the coil for running would cause the coil to overheat. However for the short amount of time that the 12 volt would be supplied to the coil during starting, would not be of sufficient duration to cause the coil to overheat. When there is a higher spark voltage a more complete combustion would occur, developing more power, making the engine easier to start. Now we are talking about a factory stock ignition system. There are aftermarket ignition systems which operate at a much higher voltage than stock. These systems do not use the auxiliary contact on the starter relay as they operate at a higher voltage all of the time. They also have to have a full 12 volts applied to their system so the resistance wire needs to be bypassed. Next slide. Here is a diagram of an ignition and starting system with the ignition switch in the off position. Notice the wire from the ignition terminal on the ignition switch to the positive side of the coil marked B. In 60 era Fords this will be a pink resistance wire to provide approximately 9 volts to the coil rather than the 12 volts when the engine is running. In earlier Fords there was a ceramic resistor mounted under the hood near the coil to drop the voltage down. As can be seen all of the black wires will not have voltage applied to them when the ignition switch is in the off position. Next slide. Now when the ignition switch is turned to the start position the start wire shown in orange here will be energized. Also there will be 12 volts applied to the ignition wire shown in pink. With 12 volts on the orange wire the starter relay will be energized. On vehicles that have an automatic transmission, there will be a neutral safety switch in the orange wire, to prevent the engine start unless the transmission is in neutral or park. Some standard shift vehicles may have a clutch disengaged switch. And as you can see by the internal schematic both the main contact and the auxiliary contact will be closed. This will apply 12 volts both to the starter motor as well as the coil B terminal. A not too common problem that can occur is the auxiliary contact can stick closed and keep the engine running when the key is turned off. Requiring the battery be disconnected to stop the engine. Once the engine is running, releasing the key will spring the ignition switch into the run position. Next slide. 
In the run position you will notice the starter relay contacts both open because there are no longer 12 volts on the start wire from the ignition switch. Without the auxiliary contact on the starter relay closed, the coil gets its power through the resistance wire which effectively supplies 9 volts to the coil. Another issue that can occur is if there is a break in the pink wire. The engine will start running when the ignition switch is in the start position because the starter relay auxiliary contact is supplying power to the coil. But the engine will die when the key is released. The reason there may be a break in the pink wire is there are bulkhead connectors at the firewall that can be corroded. Next slide. In this diagram it will show what happens in the circuit when the points are open. When the points are open there is no ground return for the coil so there is no flow of electricity through the coil. Resulting in no voltage being supplied to the spark plugs. Next slide. Now when the cam in the distributor allows the points to close there will be electricity flow through the coil and the points to ground. Resulting in the high voltage being applied to the spark plug that is pointed to by the rotor. One thing we haven't covered is the purpose of the capacitor, or condenser, in the distributor. When the points open the coil will place a high voltage on the points. The capacitor will drain this voltage off preventing the points from being burnt, since the high voltage will jump the point gap as though it were a spark plug. A bad capacitor will also keep the high voltage being generated by the coil and prevent the engine from starting. Hopefully this video will help you in troubleshooting ignition problems.